Good evening. evening. Welcome to the Church of St. Mary's. We welcome all visitors and members of this area faith community. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us stand and greet the presence of Christ in those around us. Our gathering song is number 162, Jesus is Risen, number 162. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Evening, Gathered in prayer on this third Sunday of Easter, let us ask God's blessings upon this water. This water we use this night as a reminder of our baptism, as a reminder of our, our, of our identity as sons and daughters of God. And so we pray. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and to cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant that you were to, that you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who this Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of your adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look into my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. What is real? Why, it's the opposite of that which is fake. What is real? It's the opposite of that which is artificial. What is real? It's the opposite of that which is of an imitation. 
what is real? Why, the question is beautifully answered in one of my favorite children's books entitled The Velveteen Rabbit. Perhaps you've read it. Perhaps you've read it to your children. If you haven't, why, you really should. It's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book about what is real. What is real is asked by the Velveteen Rabbit one day while he and the skin horse are inside the nursery fender and why the rabbit is quite interested in knowing what real might be, what it might feel like. So he asks the question to the skin horse who's wise, why the skin horse is wise, because he's been around a long time in that particular nursery, and why the rabbit realizes wisdom when he sees it and when he experiences it, and so he asks the skin horse on this particular day, what is real? And indeed, the skin horse filled with wisdom says, well, you become it. It's something that happens to you. It takes a very, very long time. Why, the rabbit didn't like that answer. The rabbit said, well, so it's not something that just happens to you, like something that buzzes inside you or a stick-out handle? No, no, the skin horse says. It's not that easy, you see. It takes a really, really long time. You become real when a child loves you, not just to play with, but, but really, really loves you. Does it hurt? asks the rabbit. Why, the skin horse, not only was he wise, he was also truthful. And he said to the rabbit, yes, sometimes becoming real does hurt. Usually by the time one becomes real, the skin horse went on to say, all the love and whiskers, all the hair and the whiskers have been rubbed off. And you begin to look a bit shabby. But once you become real, how you look doesn't matter anymore. Except to those people, of course, who don't understand. What is real? Why, it's something we become. It takes a long period of time to become real. Why is that important on this third Sunday of Easter? Why, it's incredibly important because of the disciples. Why? They thought they were seeing a ghost. They were struggling with what might truly be real. This real presence of the resurrected Lord standing in their midst, ushering and giving to them this incredible greeting of peace, and yet, yet they stand there and they are amazed and they're terrified and why they think they're seeing a ghost. So how does Jesus prove to them that he is real? The way you and I prove that we are real? He asks a question, perhaps you've asked it once or twice in your lifetime. Do you have anything here to eat? Why, we've asked it countless times, haven't we, of a spouse, of a parent? Haven't we asked that question of a friend as we have gone into their home, as we've been invited there? Have you anything here to eat? And of course, the disciples give to Jesus a piece of fish, and what does he do? Why, he takes it and he eats it in front of them, Luke tells us. Why is that important? Why does Luke give, go to great pains to tell us this, this process of Jesus taking fish and eating it? Why? Because Luke wants us to understand, as he wanted the disciples to understand, that Jesus is real. His presence is real. His risen, resurrected presence is real and it's in our midst and we Luke tells us at the end of today's gospel through the words of Jesus Christ himself we are to be witnesses of all these things you see we you and I are called to witness to the truth we are called to witness to the reality that the presence, the real presence of Jesus is found not just here at the Church of St. Mary at 5.30 on Saturday evenings as we gather to come to this table to receive the real presence, the body and blood of Christ. Yes, my friends, we encounter that real presence right here in a few moments, right now. But it's more than that. Because once we receive this real presence, 
Remember the definition of real from that wise skin horse. We become it. You see, that's what makes us real. And yet so oftentimes we're trying to put this other face forward, aren't we? We're trying to give this other image to people around us because, of course, whether it be the pressures of our culture, our society, or whatever it might be, but we want other people to see something other than who we truly are. Because we're afraid, perhaps terrified, like the disciples were in today's gospel, that somehow, somehow if people really see who we truly are, they might not like what they see. And yet, the real presence of our Lord, who's present to us in this time of our lives, at this very moment, why he sees the real us. And he loves us nonetheless. He loves, loves us as a result of our weaknesses and our frailty and who we truly are. And he invites us to become that sense of realness then for one another. So that as we then project that image of Christ that is within us, as we become that presence of Christ for one another, why then we become that instrument, that agent of forgiveness and compassion and understanding. We no longer focus in on the differences that separate us and keep us apart, but rather we rejoice in the differences that make us who we are truly unique and united as a church and as a community. It no longer matters what color skin or language we speak. It no longer matters what political opinions or ideas we might have. It no longer matters because, well, because we've become real. And we realize that realness not only in ourselves, but in the people we encounter. And there we welcome and we rejoice and we dine and we sit at the table and we, why we share in the fullness of who we truly are, God's beloved children. So we come on this third Sunday of Easter and we come to find the answer to that question, what is real, and we find it here at this table, we find it in this assembly gathered in prayer, and we will find it hopefully in ourselves and in the people we encounter each week so that we might go forth from this liturgy, having received the real presence, so that we might become the real presence, so that others might encounter not what is fake, not what is imitation, not what is artificial, but that they might come to encounter what is ours in this Eucharist today, the risen Christ, really present. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord this day as we offer in prayer and petition the needs of our church. That all Christians see the need and seek the benefits of God's mercy, grace, and life through the sacraments. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that those with authority and power use God's commandments as their guide to govern and protect their people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those imprisoned, physically, emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually, find freedom in the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we commit ourselves to protecting the environment as we celebrate Earth Day this week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Florence Keller, Kathy Weitzel, and Marie Eisendorf, find peace with Jesus Christ, the Risen One, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have placed their prayers in the Book of Petitions be supported by this community of prayer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we present to you today these prayers. We present as well the gifts of bread and wine and the gift of ourselves. We ask that you take these gifts, transform them and us into the real and living presence of your Son. Hear our petitions, answer them according to your will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. And invite our children to bring their offerings forward at this time. Our song for preparation of the gifts is number 536, Peace is Flowing Like a River, number 536. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, 
Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. <laughs> communion song is breaking bread number 361 the supper of the lord Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Our sending forth song is Alleluia, Alleluia, number 173.